genetics uh, or the improvement that we make are incremental, cumulative, and permanent. So some, some change that we produce now that will keep in the population and will grow. And as many people know, the improvement in milk production was done mostly with genetics and with champ uh, on the milk production uh, of, of the cow. So we, we are doing the same with methane emissions. Welcome to the Dairy Health Black Belt podcast by Wisenetics. I'm Luciano Cacheta, and I'm your host today. And today I'm joined by Dr. Uh, Mar Dr. Martinez Bogio uh, from UC Davis, who will come to talk to us about look, genetics and feed efficiency, methane emissions. So all those topics, they're super interesting. Welcome to the podcast, Guillermo. Hello, Luciano. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, no, we're, we're very excited. You are working on a very important and very uh, active area of the field that we are in the dairy science. But before we get into like your specifics and uh, all the things that you're doing, uh, can you give the listeners a little bit of an introduction about yourself? How to get? How did you get to uh, UC Davis? Uh, of course. So uh, I'm originally from Uruguay, a small country in uh, South America. So close. Uh, where are you from? Um, and uh, I did my uh, PhD in France working with uh, dairy sheep, uh, mostly on microbiome stuff. And then uh, I moved to UW Madison to, as a postdoc, uh, where I was working with methane emissions, uh, feed efficiency, also uh, rumen microbiome. And since July this year, so very recently, I'm uh, in, in the West Coast in, uh, at UC Davis as assistant professor in animal genetics. Oh, nice. That, that's, a, that's a very nice uh, and very nice trajectory, and it makes you go through Europe, so you see different perspectives, too. So that's very nice and work with sheep, uh, which is good. It's, a, it's a definitely a much smaller model for what we do. Why Genetics turns podcast airtime into brand authority. We don't sell ads. We elevate voices. Curious how far your voice can go to become a reference in the industry and attract more leads? Scan the QR code and discover how we can turn your expertise into unmatched brand authority. Let's transform expertise into influence, starting now. But let's jump in into like your your expertise and what we brought you here for. So you, you mentioned you have been working with genetics and like I said, did some sheep work, but like now cows and looking to methane emission and cow efficiency. So how can we, can you link and how can genetics uh, contribute to reducing methane emission, which is something that we've been talking more and more these days? We are working on, so we know that there are different uh, tools available uh, or that are, or will be available like uh, feed additives, uh, like vaccines or, uh, Cobalt lagoons or different ways to manage uh, the the emissions uh, at the farm level, at the herd level. So in our case, we are focusing on at the cow level, uh, and we are developing um, not only genetic tools but uh, also management tools that allow farmers uh, to have uh, different tools that can work together with feed additives, for example, and we will talk later about that probably. Um, but basically, genetics can contribute, and many people are saying that is one of the, the most promising tools that we have to target uh, methane emissions because, as uh, probably people know, so genetics uh, or the improvement that we make are incremental, cumulative, and permanent. So some, some change that we produce now that will keep in the population and will grow. And as many people know, the improvement in milk production was done mostly with genetics and with champ uh, on the milk production uh, of, of the cow. So we, we are doing the same with methane emissions. Actually, I'm working in a project that uh, Professor Francisco Peña Arecano from W. Madison is leading 
on developing different tools. One of them is genetics. So we are uh, building a reference population for a genetic evaluation for methane emission that we plan to implement in the in the future. Yeah, that, that's very interesting. And this is like, it's a curiosity of mine and it probably, it's a question or something that other listen, some other listeners might also know. So when we talk about this uh, genetic tools for improving this or improving this methane emission in this case, decrease this case, right? Uh, what, what do you mean by this genetic tools? Well, can you give me some specifics? So basically it's to develop a, a genomic evaluation. So that means that as uh, many farmers are using the lifetime net merit index. So when, when you select for some traits, could be milk production, but could be milk component or could be fertility or other traits, all those are inside an index. And our uh, plan is to include methane emissions as well as it is uh, feed efficiency on, in, in that index. So then people or farmers, when they use this index to choose which bulls or which cows to uh, select and use in their herds, they will be able to select for those animals uh, or those cows that produce less methane, right? And that is, is feasible based on a reference population. So we are phenotyping direct uh, methane emissions. So we are using equipment that are called GreenFeed, are pretty uh, famous and many people is using. So we are collecting data. We have almost 3,000 cows with methane emissions. But not only that, we have also intakes, we have uh, meal weight, meal composition, body weight that, that allow us to um, know how much methane each cow is producing and in this way build a reference population. So that means a small group of animals, a small, always talking southern animals, uh, but this population is growing uh, that have phenotypes, so methane emissions and genomic data. And from this reference population, we can jump to the overall population. And that is basically what I mean with genetic tools. So in the future, farmers will be able to select their cows as they are doing for milk production, for milk component with uh, methane emissions. So how cows that produce less methane. Yeah, no, they'll be very nice and super important right like like you mentioned those green feeds those machines are super expensive and they're not that easy to maintain they're not like it's it doesn't make sense for a commercial farm to have it but if you can extrapolate from this population that you have that's like the more uh, that you're collecting all this data then it extrapolate that for the general population that would be great and then that will also help and lead the dairy industry in this path on uh, decreasing methane production. That, that's super interesting. I think that that is one of the major challenges that we have uh, in genetics is those new phenotypes that we are developing. Uh, they have expensive equipment. They are hard to measure. So with genomic selection, we can do in a reference population, in a small group of animals, and then extrapolate to the uh, overall population. Yeah, no, and yeah, very, very nice. And like one, one of the things that I, I mentioned, like having all these phenotypes that you, that you're collecting, which is, it's impressive. It's like you said, it's a small population, but it's three thousand. Like it's still many thousands, but it's not a millions, right? But it's still something that's very, will be very reliable, and I think they'll be make a big impact and a lot of changes in the dairy industry. That's that's very good. One thing that you also mentioned. Um, it's efficiency, and you, you talk about feed efficiency, and I, I assume you're collecting all this information. You have methane, but you also mentioned you have all the new components, you have dry matter intake. So what, what's the connection like between methane emission and feed efficiency? Like, is, does, if a cow is producing less methane, is she more efficient and or vice versa? That is uh, the question, probably. And I always like to, to see the, the, um, the methane emissions uh, project more like uh, an efficiency topic than, a, than also an environmental one. And at that time, it's, it's also very important to change the, the focus, right? Um, but at the end, the cow 
is uh, losing 6 to 12%, that's say the literature, in terms of gross energy in form of gases. Um, so at the end, the uh, methane is a subproduct of the rumen fermentation. So if we can reduce those uh, emissions, so we will improve the efficiency of the cow. So as you mentioned, we are collecting both. We are collecting em em methane emissions using green feed. We are collecting feed intakes uh, in a daily basis. So what we observe, at least in our preliminary studies, is that cows that produce less methane are more feed efficient. So, and we also evaluate that using the net merit index, as I mentioned before, um, the net merit index is the aggregate value that is being used um, and is one of the most famous in, in dairy cows in, in the US that include feed efficiency. And we, we found that uh, the use of the net merit index across the years uh, also have an impact uh, on methane emissions. So cows are producing less methane now than what they were producing when in the index we have a weight for milk production much higher than what is, is now and also after the inclusion of the uh, feed say that is the trade related to feed efficiency. So uh, again, cows, at least the preliminary result that we are getting uh, shows that cows that produce less methane are more are more feed efficiency, and that is good because that that means that if we reduce methane, we are improving the the efficiency uh, of the cows that we have. Yeah, so and that getting more costs. Like, yeah, that that helps wins like you're selling milk and being more efficient using less feed and all that. So overall, it helps uh, helps directly and indirectly with this this mission. Uh, this is super interesting. It, it's We often hear about like mostly of like the, the feed additives and all those things that you can uh, feed a cow to try to decrease uh, methane. But like, it's really nice to hear from you, from the experts that are doing work and like trying to find genetics. So we, we are doing our best and doing all we can in all different fronts to have a more uh, viable production system, right? Yeah, at the end, I think that there is no one tool that can uh, solve the, the problem, right? We want, we need to work together. And if we have feed additives, we have genetics, we have vaccines in the future. So we can give the farmers the opportunity to target the issue in different ways, right? Um, also in that sense, the project uh, is developing management tool that we call that is is that the using of a spectral data. So a spectral data is is being collected in each farm every day when they or every month when they submit a milk sample to the lab. So then we get the full spectrum. And then with this data, what we are doing is to building or creating prediction equations that allow us to uh, know how much methane each cow is producing at the farm. And that is nothing about genetics. It's all about management. So if in the future we have a spectra data coming from the farms, so we, we can add a product uh, for the farmers in this monthly report where they can check how much uh, protein, fat, lactose each cow is producing, but also how much methane. And that could be useful if farmers want to use feed additives so they can target only this group of cows that is producing more methane and use the feed additives that we know that are expensive in this group of, in this specific group of cows. Yeah, I also understand if it's making a difference, right? Because then they can measure it. Again. Absolutely. And behind that, the farmers can be selecting cows and bulls that produce less methane. So, as you can see, there could be different levels of tools that farmers can be using in the same farm, targeting the uh, reducing methane emissions and at the same time improving the, the efficiency of the cows. No, that's super exciting. Uh, we're getting to the end. Like we, this is a super uh, relevant topic, and it's 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 a good conversation. And there's definitely more for us to talk about, and we're looking forward to seeing more of your work and results that will come off uh, your team in the future. Thank you for participating 
It was very nice meeting you. It was very nice talking to you. And we'll be uh, in touch for more information. See you. Thank you. So this is the end of the, today's episode of Dairy, Dairy Health Black Belt Podcast presented by WiseNetics. Thank you for joining us uh, today. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. Stay update, updated on all the new chapters and the new episodes we're sending out. If you enjoyed this episode today, uh, give us some feedback, like us, send us a review, and we'll be trying to give you and bring you all the latest in the dairy science and for improved cow's health. Uh, this is it for today. This is I'm Luciano Cacheta, and this is the end of the Dairy Health Black Belt Podcast. Thank you.